Six of his 17 overall wins as a pro by knockout. Very clean-cut young man from a poor background trying to improve his family's lifestyle through boxing. Strong, solid chin. But does he have the speed or punching power to match Farnell, Bobby? Well, I don't know if he has either one, but he is a real tough guy with a great chin. He might be able to outwork or outlast Farnell, but it's going to take a better defense than I've seen before. He's going to get the job done tonight. And the exciting Manchester product, Anthony Farnell, rated number five. WBO is a middleweight, highly curious since he's had just one fight at 160. 11 of his last 13 here in his backyard, 10 and one of those fights. His lone defeat, a stunning first round TKO to Takalu. 3 and 0 since all by knockout. Said he was too pumped up prior to the Takalu fight, working on being more calm and focused, and feels he hits harder now under new trainer Billy Graham. The forecast for a competitive bout, you agree? Absolutely, I think it's gonna be competitive fight a very hard fight for both fight and a long fight and depending on who puts their strategy be together better tails scales one way or the other all right bobby let's check the numbers it's all very close parnell just a year younger a shade shorter and gives away two and a half inches in reach and yesterday's weigh-in both came in under the 160 limit and the key WBU rules. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And if a fighter cannot continue due to an injury from an accidental foul, he must retire and will be declared the loser by TKO. Let's go up to Michael Pass. The city of Manchester, England. Tonight, Frank Warren Sports Network, in association with our main sponsors, Red Square, the drink that packs a punch, and the Vaughn Group proudly present 12 three-minute rounds for the vacant WBU Middleweight Championship of the World. We'd like to welcome our officials this evening who've been appointed by the World Boxing Union in association with the British Boxing Board of Control. Also welcome to our viewers watching live and exclusively on Sky Sports and Showtime. The WBU president is Mr. John Robinson from Norfolk in England. Commissioner Charlie Robinson from Essex in England. Our doctors are doctors David Sim, Hudson and Stead. Our British Boxing Board of Control steward in charge is His Honor Judge Alan Simpson. Timekeeper at the bell from the steel city of Sheffield, England is Mr. Barry Pinder. We have three scoring judges at ringside who are Des Bloyd from Australia, Carl Rogers from England, and Tony Walker, also from England. Finally, when the action commences this evening, the referee is truly one of the world's finest, Mr. Dave Paris from London, England. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Championship Boxing. Introducing to you firstly, boxing out of the red corner, wearing the silver colored shorts, with a black and blue trim. At the weight he scaled 11 stone and five pounds, or 159 US pounds. His record, an excellent one, 22 contests, 17 wins. Six of those wins coming by way of knockout, only two defeats and three draws. He comes to the ring as the former all-African light middleweight champion, hailing from Primrose in South Africa. Please welcome to Manchester, England, Ruben Grunwald. And opposing him, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing his familiar black colored shorts with a gold trim. At the way, he also scaled 11 stone, five pounds, or 159 US pounds. He has an outstanding record. 30 contests, 29 wins. 20 of those wins coming by way of knockouts with only the one solitary defeat. Tonight, he is the second of our challengers from this fabulous city of Manchester, England, Anthony. The referee, Mr. Dave Paris, will now give his final instructions to both boxers. This is 12 three-minute rounds for the vacant WBU Middleweight Championship of the World. Right, boys, you both know the rules. Punch with the knuckle part of the glove. If one of you goes down, the other goes to the furthest of the corner. Break when I tell you to. Defend yourself at all times. Shake hands, boys. Good luck to you both. 
heavily pro Farnell crowd here in Manchester. Great crowd on hand. Farnell feels Gruwal straight in style suits him perfectly, and his own jab will be a key weapon. Gruwal said he'll start fast and show Farnell no respect. He'll apply pressure and work everything off the jab. Ruben Grunwald starting off fast. He's wearing the silver with the black trim. And the man they call the warrior, the hometown hero, Farnell, wearing the black. Well, Grunwald came right at Farnell. He's not showing any fear. He doesn't care about the hometown hostile crowd. And Grunwald knows Farnell is not a particularly fast starter. Only three of his 20 knockouts have come in the first round. He's a young man in love with boxing Farnell, exuberant, excited, sometimes a bit too excited. He so much wants to be a huge success. He was something of a hot property here in England until he was slowed by the unexpected first round TKO loss to a fighter named Takalu last year. And he created quite a stir locally when he changed longtime trainers, Brian Hughes, to Billy Graham. Well, right now, Farnell is not fighting his fight at all. He's backing up consistently, which is not his way of fighting. And he's getting hit by a lot of punches from the challenger. The challenger being Ruben Grunwald from South Africa, living in London, nothing fancy. Fairly deliberate and methodical, but he is gutsy and capable. He may not be fast or quick enough for Farnell, but he is determined. And he won't go down without a fight. He's got the good chin, as uh, Bobby indicated. He's never been stopped. His two losses by decision, and he's the one who's coming forward in a very small ring. Well, right now, he is pressing the fight. He's establishing his jab, working in behind it, using the combination, showing better speed than I've seen in the tapes, and even a little more power. Grunwald's an accumulative effect guy. He, he doesn't have the big punch. Only six knockouts. And he doesn't have as good a quality of opposition as Farnell, but he is controlling the pace in the first round. But right now, he has set the tone that's going to make Farnell fight or die because he is coming forward in a very impressive fashion. Grunwald might be stronger than Farnell. His last four fights at 168, eight of Farnell's last nine at 154. So we'll see if the strength is a factor. Grunwald continues to press the attack, and he's got Farnell backpedaling. Well, right now, Grunwald is working behind the jab very well. He's setting up his right hand, a couple of hooks to the body, but the jab is telling he's also keeping Farnell off balance and not allowing him to sit for any of his power shots. And don't be fooled because Farnell is not a fast starter. It takes him a little while to get into his rhythm. He's 29 and 1 with 20 knockouts. Farnell in the black. Ruben Grunwald in the silver, 17, 2, and 3, and 6 KOs. Grunwald with an extensive and prolific amateur career. About 100 amateur fights, several titles. The African 154-pound champ. Nice body work there by Grunwald coming underneath Farnell's hands and also coming back up top with the jab. A very good opening round for Grunwald. As we check Bobby Chez's keys to victory after one. Let's we'll start with Anthony Farnell. He needs to use his jab to get inside and set up his big power shots. He's been lacking in the past. He definitely needs to use that jab. Also, he wants to take the fight inside. He's a much better fighter on the inside, not from the outside. And lastly, outwork Grunwell. Farnell likes to work at a frantic pace. This could be to his advantage. For Ruben Grunwald, he wants to establish his jab, just as we saw him doing the first round. Coming in, keeping Farnell off balance and scoring points. Also, set the fight distance. He can fight at an outside pace, not get too tight. Better for him, and sharp counter punch. Make Grunwald punch, miss, and pay. And you're gonna, when you start feeling comfortable, you're gonna start oh, teeing up with that fucking left hand. Oh my, right? All right. Farnell 11 and 1 here in his hometown of Manchester with five knockouts. That low loss versus Takalu, normally a crowd pleaser who had his difficulty in establishing himself in round one against the South African in the silver. You know, it's funny, his corner is trying to sit when you start feeling comfortable, when you start using that left hand, you should start feeling comfortable right away. <laughs> right. Well, Farnell wants to fight a controlled fight but usually winds up in a slugfest and now he's up against the ropes being pummeled to the body by Grunwald. 
most of those punches were being blocked, but still, Farnell not being very effective off the ropes. The thing about Farnell is, is he misses wildly with a left hook attempt. He can turn it up in a hurry when he sees it open. He does have one punch knockout power. But tonight he faces a, a guy who's never been down or stopped in Grunewald, who continues to come forward. Grunewald going with the jab, very effective. The very first thing that Grunewald did was establish that jab, and he's winning each and every round because of that jab. And Grunewald does have the good chin. The question for him, does he hit hard enough to hurt Farnell, who's trying to come back? Farnell's been down three times, the last time with Takalu in his lone defeat four fights ago, a first round uh, TKO, and Grunwald has never been down. They like what they see from the Grunwald corner in terms of the jab. But they want him to double up with it. Farnell doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be able to catch his rhythm. Doesn't seem to be able to let four, three, four, five punch counters go. It just doesn't seem to be in his repertoire tonight. Farnell missing again by a lot with the right hand. Again over the top, big wild right hand. Under a minute remaining in the second round. It's scheduled for 12 for the vacant World Boxing Union Middleweight Championship. Controlling the pace and connecting more frequently. Not only that, but he's, he's, he's able to work when he wants to work and rest when he wants to rest. And Farnell does not step up and push him. Farnell is three and zero since his only loss. Let's see if Farnell steps it up. Farnell starting to use his own jab much better. Landed a couple of solid jabs to the face of Grunewald, but no combinations behind him. That left truck was blocked by Grunewald's right glove. When you want to get that left hook in Probably first, another round for Grunewald. Like this. I agree. Jab first. Pop bang. Right. And hook off the jab. You no, no, just touch him with it and hook off it. Remember, you want it, you want it, you've got to take each other away with your own job. Rune Wall being the aggressor here with his back to us, likes to work his way in behind that jab and goes right to the body, starts throwing right hands and lefts underneath to the body of Farnell. And Farnell, not very effective off the ropes. We talk about establishing a jab. Here's a triple jab, and he comes back with another triple jab. That's a lot of jabbing, very effective, getting points and setting up combinations. Working well, one of my keys in the win. Before the Takalu fight, Farnell took up Latino dance lessons to improve his, uh, his movement around the ring. It didn't help in that department, but I hear he's never alone on Saturday night. Works for me. We all need a good dance partner. Today he needs to fight. Round three, and thus far it's been uh, all Grunwald in the silver, the South African now based uh, out of London. Today you saw three good jabs back by Farnell. What it did was short circuit the rhythm of Grunwald. That's what he needs to do, but now he needs to work his combinations off the jab. Farnell with rabbit punches. So Dave Paris, a former heavyweight fighter himself, with a little lecture there, both with some roughhouse tactics. Yeah, they got a little nasty on the inside of two, just kept banging each other behind the head. Rabbit punches, as it's called. Very illegal. Starting to get nasty now on the inside. Farnell has a very good right uppercut. And he lands there right on the jaw. You notice on the inside, very, very carefully and sneakily, you'll see Gronwald lift that left shoulder into the face of Farnell. The referee's going to eventually warn him for that. Farnell feels his uh, best weapon is the left hook. Let's see if we see it. He is a good body puncher. He looks to soften his opponents up. And when he really gets going, he does punch with the uh, evil intent. He puts everything behind his punches. But so far, he has not been able to get it going. 
And it's much more difficult to punch well going backward. When your momentum's heading one way, your punches come the other. It lessens their impact. Parnell has power in both hands. We've yet to see it here tonight. Oh, there's a big right hand of the jaw by Parnell. Let's nice see right if that hand. gets him going. There's a nice right hand, the best punch of the night so far for him, but not enough. Another right hand, a grazing blow. It gets the crowd into it. Watch out for the shoulder there for Grunwald. He knows some tricks. Here he goes again with his left shoulder. I know you can see him. He's going to eventually get a warning for that. At least he should. That's Grunwald in the silver. He did it again just now. Now Grunwald wisely goes back to the left jab. Let's see if it follows it up with a, a power punch. Grunwald's jab has been effective, but they want him to double up with it. Under 20 seconds remaining in round three. Farnell coming on a little bit after two losing, uh, assuming losing first round. Much better round for Farnell, but I still don't think he did enough to outwork. Grunwell, I think Grunwell still outworked him, outlanded him, more effective too much. But it looks like he may be getting to figure Grunwald out a little bit. He's finding his rhythm. Watch them get sort of wrapped up and start hitting each other behind the head. One by Farnell started it, and they just kept uh, both kept doing it. Referee Paris taking them apart, saying, "Hey, that's enough." The best punch of the night so far for Farnell was that right hand to the temple, and as you saw, it wasn't a really big right hand, more of a slap. But the best punch he's landed all night. All right. Let me demonstrate that you can. Okay. I need a towel. Please tell. Right. He, he wants to keep him forward. You've got to fucking contain him. Step back. You never really know if it's part of a strategy, but Farnell was telling us in the fighter meeting yesterday that he has to calm down and not be so emotional. He feels he has to not force the issue. Box first and use his power. Perhaps this is all a part of a plan here. We'll find out in due time. We're watching the corner. If you look at Grunwald, he was not breathing heavy. Seemed very calm, very relaxed, very comfortable with the pace. And I didn't get the same impression in Farnell's corner. A little more of a sense of urgency over there, perhaps. Round four is scheduled for 12 for the WVU vacant middleweight title. So far, uh, Farnell has been pretty much controlled here by the South African Grunwald in the silver. Who comes into the fight with more of a deliberate methodical reputation. Again, Grunwald going to the left shoulder tactic. And I think this time the referee caught that and watched the shoulder. So, warning number one, we see. Yeah, he didn't see it the first few times. Now he's catching up. Double it, double it, come on! Every time Grunwald's corner asks him to double the jab, it falls on deaf ears. There's that shoulder movement again, and Farnell didn't like it. He hit him on the break. That was, you know what? It was interesting, but that was that was actually a legal hit on the break because they broke themselves. The referee didn't do it. Come on, punch it! But Farnell is showing Grunwald how he feels about it, nevertheless. Good right-left combination upstairs by Farnell, his best series of punches yet. Farnell is now landing much better punches, power punches, than he has in the first three rounds, taking a little control with his power. And now a left shoulder right hand by Farnell. Did you see that? Yes, I did. I saw that, and you know what? <laughs> that was as blatantly illegal as it gets. That's called give back by Farnell. Right, 
As we approach 40 seconds left of the fourth, so quick and body shots. Come on, looking over the ref. You thought it was a low blow, perhaps. I thought that one was low too, and then the referee uh, obviously didn't see from his angle, but Grunewald was trying to point it out to him. Not a smart move. First rule of thumb: don't look away from the man in front of you to try to get guidance from the ref. And now Grunewald answers back with some borderline punches. A very physical round. No, it's gonna be. Right? You're back. Not yet. Not, it's not gone proper through yet. Right, it's just a little graze at the minute. Listen. Parnell getting a little sneaky and dirty on the inside. Watch the shoulder. Shoulder to the jaw, right there, and then the right hand to the to the temple. And now a punch that I believe went south of the border. Yeah, that well, you know what? That could have been border, but that one looked a little low to me. Nice combination later. One of the better ones he's thrown right hand on the inside, followed by a hook and a couple more follow-up shots. But those were more solid punches. Probably the best ones he's landed tonight. All right. In the first four rounds, Grunwald and the silver moved Farnell in the black around the ring with his jab. Almost at will, but toward the end of the last round, it was Farnell who pressed the action. I see some blood on the right forehead of Grunwald. I should say the left forehead. And now it seems to be gone, so maybe it was just a splattering of out of the nose. Farnell picking up the pace, and the crowd reacts. Good left hook, and it opens up that cut some more. It's around the right eye of Grunwald. And now it's becoming target practice for Farnell. He's sticking the jab, stuffing it into the cut area. And I don't believe it's in a very good spot there, Bobby. It, it's, it looks like it's right off the eyebrow or the right eye. It does not look like it's in a good place. And it looks no. like it's clearly going down into the eye. It is. It's going into the eye, and it could be clouding his vision. It's to the right of the right eye, but angling into the eye socket. And a good right hand over the top by Grunwald, who is gritty. He's a game fighter. It was a nice counter right hand over a drop left jab by Farnell. And once again, Grunwald trying to come forward. Press the issue. There's a good left hook to the jaw by Farnell. That was solid. Very good, a right uppercut to the chin by Farnell. And Farnell finally spins Grunwald around. The momentum clearly turning here now. Referee Dave Paris has the position. Check out the cut. Cut his gears be waiting behind the ref. The crowd reacting to that, of course. Farnell in the black is their man from Manchester. Grunwald, though, has a lot of resolve as he's doing all of the hitting. Body shots again. Grunwald thought it was low. Oh, a big right hand right on the kisser by Grunwald. Back comes Farnell. Farnell hit him with the best right hand of the night, and Grunwald didn't even blink. Does have a great chin. He really does. He's never been down. Tough kid from a poor background in South Africa. Trying to raise the lifestyle of his family by boxing. Very clean cut, young man. Terrific right uppercut right on the apex of the jaw by Farnell. Now, right now, Grunwald may be sensing a sense of urgency because of that cut, walking in with his hands not even up as much as he should not block a punch, just looking to try and get something done. Farnell now using the uppercut as a key weapon. It's been working. It's getting through. There's his left hook, which he loves, but not as effective as the uppercut. Well, things have really gotten interesting now with the cut. Do 
Left hand, stuff in the jab, it reopens the cut. Room off Gutty, there's a left hook and a nice right hand counter over the top of that drop left hand by Farnell. Room off showing a lot of gut, but maybe not fighting, fighting as smart as he could. He needs to maybe step off a little bit, let that cut close a little. We'll see what kind of job his cut man Dean Powell does as we hit round six. Grunwald controlling the early rounds. Farnell coming on and opening up that cut around the right eye of Grunwald. Ah, right! Ah, Again, it's Grunwald marching forward. Grunwald stuffing the jab, and it sends Farnell back further. Beautiful jab by Grunwald. Grunwald is establishing that jab, and that, that's been that the first three rounds. They gave him almost completely off the jab. He set up his combinations. He had Farnell off balance, working it well. Now he's getting back to it. Farnell looking frustrated. These are middleweights. Farnell, the local product from Manchester, and the black trunks. Grunwald from South Africa, living in London in the silver. This is for the vacant WBU 160-pound belt. Hey. Low blow by Farnell. Hey. And that was blatantly low. But it didn't hurt Grunwald. That may have a good stiff left jab. Grunwald comes back with four or five of his own. Referee Dave Paris cautioning Farnell. Said holding and hitting, he said, I will yep. take the point. It's really getting rough now. It's developing into an alley fight. There's blood all over Farnell's face, but it's from Grunwell's eye. Now, Grunwell's winning this round, even though his face is looking bad and the cut's ugly. He's out jabbing Farnell three to one, and, and the power department is no big edge either way. Grunwell just walked into a jab, but he's got that terrific chin. If you just tuned in and saw what was going on, you'd think the man in silver was losing, but that's probably not the case. Well, don't forget we're in Manchester, so, well, you never can tell. Let's see, the judges are from Australia and two from England. Look out. Farnell coming on, but not for long. Well, Grunwald claimed a low blow, and I'll tell you, I didn't see it because his back was to us, but he bent over in two and then got tagged by, by Farnell. Grunwald continues to dictate the tempo. There's a low blow, low, low blow by Farnell, way south of the board. I believe the left eye is now cut of Grunwald as well. Both eyes are in terrible shape, but Grunwald fights on. The kid's got a lot of heart. When you've got to pull it, you've got to work now. You've got to really push yourself into this, you know what I mean? He's very brave, but you have been whipping quite a few times. You understand? Yeah. You've got to work that jack. He has got no answer to himself, but you're not doing it. Everything comes off the jack. I'm single right, double jab and work. Watch his low blow. There's a clean left hook south of the border by Farnell. And that's the one that, that bent Grunwald over that the referee didn't see because his angle was bad. And later on, there's another one underneath. There's one pretty, pretty clean south of the border. Go on, Second 
Grunwald fighting very bravely as we had a round seven scheduled for 12. Farnell has been uh, cautioned and admonished several times by the referee Dave Paris, but there have yet to be any point deductions. I get the distinct feeling that the deducts a point here and it factors into the fact that there could be a problem with the crowd. <laughs> Are you saying that the referee may be reluctant to do that for fear of a mob mentality? Loosely translated, that would be accurate. <laughs> oh, Crumble goes down, but wait a minute, he was pushed down. No, not pushed down. He's pulled by the back of the head and just pushed on it, and he just went down. Now, by this point, how come he hasn't deducted at least one point? From well, Farnell. I don't know. That that wasn't such a blatant foul as far as I was concerned. He just pushed him. Not a big deal. Beautiful right hand there by Farnell. But the accumulation of cautions and warnings. Now he tells Farnell to keep up the punches. That one was close. That one was borderline low. But usually, usually it's two or three warnings and then you get a point deduction. But it's been more than that. It's actually at the referee's discretion, but. Beautiful left uppercut there by Farnell. That short left, very crisp, that got through to the, the jaw of Grunwald, but Grunwald withstands it. Body shot with the left hand by Farnell. But that, again, does not stop Grunwald. He keeps coming forward. Grunwald's got an excellent jab like this. Just saw four or five consecutive jabs, but his power shots just cannot match what Farnell is putting out. And he's getting hurt some of those power shots. Well, Farnell is more of a, an erosive fighter, a, an accumulative guy. Trying to come back and perhaps win this uh, on points, but he does have more power than Grunwald. Farnell, 20 of his 29 wins by knockout. Grunwald, 6 of his 17 by knockout. And he still doesn't take a point away. As Another I said, one. he may be reluctant. Yeah, but this is now bordering on ridiculous. There reaches a point when you have to start getting rational about it. Let's hope it doesn't carry over into the main event, that kind of uh, thinking, with another local favorite. Right in the left hand, right hook by Farnell. Beautiful combination by Farnell. And Farnell may be wondering what's keeping Grunwald up. He's got to be gaining respect for Grunwald. Grunwald looks at Farnell and shakes his head at the bell. And his right eye is almost completely closed now, Grunwald. You understand? You must go for broke here. You listen, yeah? One more round you're getting off of us, Korea, because you're getting it beat up in here slowly, because you're letting him do it. Letting him break, you're letting him do it. Push him back. Push him back with your jab. You're not doing nothing when he comes forward. When you think you're jabbing, you're ending with your jab from somebody. Listen, sir. Watch here on the inside. Farnell is clearly the stronger of the two. As they get tangled up, he puts his hand around his neck and just sort of pushes. There you go. Just lean down his neck and push it down. That's not as blatant a foul as, as it could have been. Grunwald coming back with the jab, just stuffing the jab in the face of Farnell and then whooping an uppercut underneath. Very effective with the jab, but he doesn't have the power shots. At the end of the round, there was the right hand I was talking about. Farnell landing really cleanly with that right hand. Those power shots are taking their toll on Grunwald. As are the left jabs. The accumulative left jabs have almost swelled shut Grunwald's right eye. A very nasty, rough physical fight. Just look at Grunwald's face. But Grunwald, gutsy, Brave continues to fight back. Boy, some nasty stuff going on the inside. Now rapid punches by both, but it's being initiated by Grunwald. Grunwald fighting with one eye, the left eye. I wonder if he could even see out of the right eye. Grunwald still working that left hand overtime. Jabbing, uppercuts, hooks. Nice right hand by Grunwald and landed on the nose. 
Again, the big factor here is the lack of punching power by Grunwald. He's winning this fight if he is winning the fight with his jab. The jab and he's out working. Cornell, Cornell just clearly the bigger punch in those oh, left. Again, it, Paris didn't break him, but on the uh, the break, Farnell let loose. Protect yourself at all time. If you break yourselves, the referee has no no reason to caution you. Grunwald back to the jab. That time he doubled up, followed it up with a right hand, but not an effective punch. Effective right hand by Farnell on the inside of the head. Look out! He had Grunwald off balance and he and turned his fired back. Right. Grunwald turned his back on Farnell. That's an absolute no-no. No. That's an absolute no-no. First rule of thumb, don't turn your back. And Farnell took advantage. Let it go, let it go. Let it go. Hold Holding it, and hitting right by now. Farnell. And then Farnell hit on the break. Right hand was blocked by the shoulder. Now there's some tape. tape coming from the left glove of Farnell. They may have to uh, stop the fight for a moment. And that's what they do. On it. I want that left hook. Come on, you're pushing back. Don't let him run away with this. They're not allowed to give instructions, but they are, and Dave Paris is allowing it. Right on him, Harry. I want that left Boy, hook on him and have jail on him. A good rest. You're not allowed to give instructions, but you're right. right Paris closing. is allowing it. He's not saying anything. Round eight continues. That took about 20 seconds. And it seems like it's invigorated Grunwald more than Farnell. So they both got the same amount of rest. This might be a tribute to his conditioning. Grunwald does not stop coming. Look at these exchanges. A low blow by Farnell and Paris didn't see it. He, not, he did. He says something, but he still hasn't taken a point away. How many times has he warned the guy and not done anything? These are good shots getting in on the inside by Grunwald at the bell. Oh, nine, 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 nine. Right. That eye, that eye ain't going out much longer. You're gonna have to fucking hit it. You know what I mean? He feels like shit, but he's dragging it out because he's a fucking brave bastard. Unless he'd be less brave when he can't see out that fucking eye. What's my life? Nothing. Fuck all. Let me worry about it. You worry about the fight. Stick that jab with the hook of the jab. It'll be big. Listen. As they get inside, there's a lot of holding and nastiness. There you see Farnell holding and hitting, hooking the arm and then just banging on the inside. And then just as they go to break, hits him again. The referees warned him a lot about a lot of different things. Here's where he turns his back on Farnell, an absolute no-no. Grunwald almost paid dearly for it. Grunwald's right eye swelled shut as we enter round nine. It has been a foul fest and a very ugly affair. From ringside, we think Grunwald's ahead, but you just don't know here. And not, and not by an awful lot, it's just by a couple of points. And the thing is, Bobby, recently the WBU has come under criticism here in England for some very questionable judging. I also question the officiating in the ring here with the third man in Dave Paris for yet taking a point away, not taking a point away, as of yet, from Farnell and after gonna, several warnings. If we're going to take it that far, you have to question some of the rankings that the WBU have to have these fighters as high as they are having beaten no proven commodities. Right. Right, Farnell is ranked number five by the WBO, which is almost laughable. And that's at middleweight, where he's had one fight. Yeah, I find that to be difficult. But I'm not on the rankings committee, that's for sure. Brown is still working that jab. It's been very effective throughout. He's been out hustling Farnell. Farnell off balance momentarily, and he got tagged. Oh, look out now, an uppercut. 
cut. I'm not sure if it landed solidly, but Blue Wall went down anyway. It was reason when it did land solidly. He's up at seven, and that's the first time that he's ever been down in his career. Now, Paris in the face of Barnell. And he is still not taking a point from Farnell. So Grimwald goes down here in round nine. I think he just lost his mouthpiece as well. Look at this wild exchange. There's another shoulder by Farnell right in the face of the referee. He does nothing. A left hook that staggers Grimwald. A right hand that rocks Grimwald. Goes through the ropes. The referee, no, he was pushed through the ropes by Farnell. Grunwald's right eye is completely shut. He's a one-eyed fighter. Talk about guts and heart. And he continues to hit back. He gets an elbow from Farnell in the face. Farnell dirty throughout. The referee not taking any points away. And this smells. He hit him low again. And Bobby, the eye that's still open is a little glassy after that ball to the ropes. Now Farnell goes down. Yes, that's right. You know what? Grunwald got tired and didn't hit him with a left hook to the groin. A low blow by Grunwald. And now Farnell will get the rest. He's hit in 10 times low in runs. If a fighter is hit below the belt and cannot continue, within five minutes he loses, but he's ready to go after only a few seconds. What a completely filthy, dirty fight. And Grunwald, look at him, he's stationed and ready to fire away. And there's the bell. Wild fight. as Farnell comes in, he lands a low blow there, and that right uppercut, actually, I'm not sure which one hurt him more. As he goes to the ropes here, again, very aggressive, pushes, he just pushes Grunwald through the ropes. Farnell being very aggressive, very physical, but also quite a bit dirty. And now, after having enough, Grunwald just says, you know what, I'm gonna send one south, see how you like it. They took a point away from Grunwald. Round 10, scheduled for 12. You know, we've seen everything but headbutts, right? Don't open your mouth too soon. I know. Right hand over the top, raising blow by Grunwald. Now it's Farnell going forward. Both fighters showing some signs of fatigue here. There's another hit on the brick by Farnell. So if you guys break under your own power, you can swing on the break. When a referee tells you to break, that means stop action and break clean. There was the headbutt by Grunwald, I think. Not sure it was on purpose, though. It's the vacant WBU middleweight championship. Anthony Farnell, the hometown product from Manchester in the black. Ruben Grunwald of South Africa, now living in London in the silver. It has been a roughhouse, nasty fight. Grunwald going down, but it's not a, a knockdown. He just slipped. Slip both fighters under a little push. Both fighters looking exhausted. It's been a controversial affair, and that Farnell has been uh, cautioned, warned, admonished several times, and here he's warned again by Dave Paris, I think and he hasn't in, taken a point away. I think he's in double figures with the warnings, and I think that's a little outrageous. This is ridiculous. It really is. And here at ringside, from this vantage point, it appears as if Grunwald's uh, uh, head, maybe not by a lot, 
but now low blows into the groin area by Farnell. He finally takes a point. And the crowd has the audacity to build. Let's see how Grunwald reacts to this now. A bloody Grunwald whose right eye is completely shut. And Grunwald's coming back strong. Another low blow by Farnell. Grunwald's still sitting there firing. No, he doesn't have the power, but he does have the chin. And he's got the guts and the heart. A near sellout crowd of about 16, 17,000 cheering Farnell on. He's called the warrior, but it's Grunwald who's been the warrior tonight. Grunwald landing with those overhand rights, but just doesn't have that much pop behind it. Only six of his 17 wins by KO as the blood streaks down the right side of Grunwald's face. It's amazing that the eye didn't get worse in terms of blood, but it's swelled, swollen pretty good. The blood has been minimal for the size cuts. Both fellas in tremendous condition to fight at this pace this long. You must keep the shape. You know what it is. You must keep the shape. 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 You very close. There are a couple of rounds that could go either way. A couple of the two points, one deducted from each side. That should even things out. Parnell picking up the pace, trying to end it here. Terrific and not combination. Alone. Great uppercuts and hooks inside there. Parnell hoping that this doesn't go to the car. Because I have to feel that it's awfully close. Beautiful jab by Grunwald as he stuck it right in the face of Parnell. And holding and hitting by Grunwald now. So he's giving Farnell a taste of his own medicine. Right now, the big bombs that Farnell are landing are more important than the jab being landed by the challenger. This is probably Farnell's toughest fight, even though he does have a first-round TKO loss because of the strength factor. I got to believe that Grunwald, who's fought a lot of his fights at 168, is stronger than Farnell. That's a factor here. The nice left hook by Grunwald, but he just doesn't have the pop. Right. There's another right hand. He, that one was far, that one was way low. Let's see if he takes another point away. He's not, at least as of yet. And they're booing Grunwald. These fans are nuts. Well, they're just hometown fans. I shouldn't say that. You all okay, sir? Breathe out. Take your time, Ruben. Grunwald's corner screaming, take your time, take your time. Eugene Maloney, who's his manager and the corner man, He can see out of one eye. Every he's taking two points now. He's taking two points from Farnell now? He said two points. I don't know if he's meaning, he means it. that's the second point for Lobo or two more points. Very unclear, Bobby. And very vague. Very nebulous. And Grunwald positions himself, but he's ready again. He seems to be in great shape. Grunwald with a furious assault. Farnell using his elbow and shoulders again. Paris taking a long look at Grunwald's eye. 
We approach a minute to go in the 11. Look at that jab by Grunwald, sticking it into the face of Carmel. And Grunwald goes down from an accumulative attack. But it's not being ruled a knockdown. It's being a pushdown. No, it's not a, it's not a knockdown. It's not a knockdown. again by Farnell and how can he not take another point away I think the next time he deducts has to be a DQ unbelievable look at this jab work by a Grunwald and he's pushing Farnell back this may be one of the most amazing displays of heart that I've seen by Grunwald Farnell hurt him to solar plex with a nice right uppercut. Farnell digging in, trying to break Grunwald's ribs. How in the world do you score this round? I thought Farnell was winning the round, then it was a two-point deduction, then a comeback. This one's confusing. Was it a 10-7 round for Grunwald? Did Farnell win the round to make it 9-8? Really oh. tough to score. Oh. Listen, if you don't win this round, if you don't win this round, if you don't win this round massive, you're not going to get it. You took two fucking rounds off you, right? Watch another big wild right up because there it is to the to the groin. He gets he gets hit clean below the belt, and the referee takes I think takes two points. So I'm walk over to judge. And you watch Grimo coming back firing, but there you see he gets hurt on the inside. He clearly gets hurt. That right uppercut to the body and the one to the jaw definitely staggered one wall. Plenty of work, Ruben. You can still win the fight. Do you want to win it? Yeah. Come on. Double jab right hand. 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 Double jab Grimwald's been 12 only once, and he lost. Here we go, round 12 in a wild, crazy fight. There's some tape on Grimwald's left arm. He needs to be put down. Grimwald starts the round fast. He's starting the round with the jab. That's it. He's using the jab. Keeping Fornell at the end of the jab. Fornell cannot get past him. And a right uppercut on the jaw by, by Grunwald. They told him in Grunwald's corner, use the jab, use the jab, and he is. Listen to this crowd. Getting behind the man of the black trunks, Farnell. Left hook by Grunwald. It was a beautiful combination. Left hook to the body, left hook to the head, right hand. He's up at six. He's okay. Amazing guts. Farnell wants to end it in the 12th. Grunwald's in trouble too, Steve. Farnell yeah. wants to end all doubt. They hit on the great boat. What an amazing finish to a wild fight. Grimwald's in trouble, his legs are not under him, he's not moving, he can't use the jab. He is in trouble right now, he is on the brink of getting stopped. There's a full minute left, Steve. Both fighters exhausted. But both showing heart. Again, Farnell Bay Warren for pushing Grunwald down. Problem is the power here, Farnell is still strong and can still back. And the punches don't have that type of effect. He pushed him down. The crowd thought it was a knockdown, a clean one. Very sloppy fight. Less than 40 seconds to go. And now a slip by Farnell. This one has been an adventure. Farnell misses with a right hand. As we approach 20 seconds to go. 
What do these guys have left? The crowd chanting and singing with 10 seconds remaining. Are now looking to knock Grunewald out. But Grunewald refuses to go. Big right hand by Farnell. There's your bell. What a fight. On the road, on the verge, every couple of seconds, we should have moved him off. The left was atrocious. I think he won anyway. Well, win or lose, Ruben Grunwald has made a lot of fans, maybe not here in the MEN arena, but many watching on television. Parnell and the baseball cap being saluted by the fans. You want to hear how well they have this, Steve? Between all the point deductions, the knockdown, the knockdown in the last round, plus the extra pummeling, I have it 111 to 111. Really? I let scored the last round, a three-point round for Farnell, which would give him a draw. He well, just, he, that fight was close enough to be stopped. I don't think that would sit too well with this uh, big crowd here at the magnificent MAN. But they don't hear me yet. Yeah. <laughs> if they heard you, I'm getting out of the way. Uh, okay. Uh, I got you. Well, there he is, and now it's very anxious. For Farnell and Grunwald. You know which side the crowd is rooting. Watch this beautiful left hook. There's one to the body, one to the head, and a right hand, right on the jawline. And I'll tell you what, it was a pretty combination. I know the body shot hurt, but that right hand was picture perfect. Well, you just don't know if the judges are being influenced by the crowd. Two judges. From England, one from Australia, Des Bloyd from Australia, Kyle Rogers and Tony Walker from England. But see, in a world title fight where one man is not from England, one is two judges from England gives the appearance of impropriety. It's not a, it's just not a good thing to do. Grunwald smacking his gloves together, showing uncanny heart in this fight. And it's taking a long time to to get the uh, decision from the judges. And this crowd anxiously awaits here at the MEN Arena in Manchester, England. The cards will soon be put in the hands of ring announcer Michael Pass. Here's one of the judges. A very serious look on his face. How do you have it at home? Bobby Chez has it a draw. That is provided that the two-point deduction was taken. Otherwise, Farnell came back to do enough, but he did foul so often that it's, 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 it's a shame that this fight had to unfold that way. A controversial fight. We got on the referee a lot for taking 10 rounds to finally start taking points away from Farnell. Round 10, we're going to see a combination below the belt, not just one, but two. The one, two, both of them south of the border. And I think... <laughs> you know, Farnell did it on a regular basis. He did it with, with just one instance here, but he'd done it all night. He'd done it all night. Round 11, here's another right hand. Michael Pass has it. Judge Des Bloyd of Australia. 114 to 110. Judge Carl Rogers scores the contest. 113 to 111. And Judge Tony Walker scores the contest also 113 to 111. All three judges in favor of the winner by unanimous decision and new WBU middleweight champion of the world, Ruben Grunewald. A very just decision and it's not going to make these fans happy at all. A very just decision, I thought. Considering the low blows, I, I, I have to agree. A 
gutsy performance by the South African Ruben Grunwald now living in London and he said if he'd win he'd take the title back to London. Let's check the official ringside judges scorecards for you right here.